about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, like respiration, is a redox, oxidation reduction process. The CO2 becomes reduced to sugar as electrons along with hydrogen ions from the water are added to it. So this is the reduction or the CO2 will be reduced. And the water molecules, on the other hand, are oxidized when they lose electrons along with its hydrogen ions. In photosynthesis, okay, in photosynthesis, we need the energy that comes from the light. So light energy is captured by the chlorophyll pigment molecules to boost the energy of the electrons. And uh, the light energy is, uh, so the electrons over there in the chloroplast. The chlorophyll is in the chloroplast. And now, uh, so the light energy will uh, convert, will be converted to chemical energy. And the chemical energy is going to be stored in the chemical bonds in the sugar, in the glucose. The... Photosynthesis uh, contains two stages that they are linked together by ATP and NADPH. So it's not NADH like in cellular respiration, but it will be NADPH. So it uh, contains a phosphate group uh, also on, uh, on the molecules. So the two parts of the two stages of the photosynthesis, the first one is the light dependent reaction or uh, Shortened version is the light reaction. That is, the light is necessary uh, to be present for this reaction uh, to to happen, and it happens in the chloroplasts and in the thylakoid membranes, what I just uh, drew over with orange. So the thylakoid membranes, the enzymes are in the thylakoid membranes. The other part, the other stage of the uh, photosynthesis is the light independent reaction or the Calvin cycle. It has its name like the Cellular respiration had the Krebs cycle. Now we are having the Calvin cycle in here. So the Calvin cycle happens in the stroma of the chloroplast. Now, the next page. And before we get into the photosynthesis, truly understand what's hap what would happen, we have to focus on what is really a light. So sunlight contains energy and it's a electromagnetic energy or electromagnetic wave comes from the sun. And this wave um, is the radiation and the visible light is only a smart part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can uh, see it, but it contains different uh, different uh, waves, uh, different, what is that? Um, different energies along its way. So, uh, how about, as well as the light is not only a wave, but a, uh, is a particular material like the photon. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, late with that. So, here is the electromagnetic wave and the wavelength in a wave is the distance between the two uh, crests or between the two troughs. As we go to the right, the wavelength is uh, decreasing or the frequency of the wave increases because they are inversely related to each other, as well as the energy of the wave or the photon is increasing as we move towards to the right or as the frequency would increase. So the uh, a low frequency waves at the left are the first ones are the radio waves 
Next one comes a little bit uh, higher frequency, uh, frequency or the microwaves. And after comes the infrared. After that will be the visible spectrum that we can, our eyes have photon, uh, uh, our eyes have receptors to pick up those photons and we will interpret it as a light. So inside of the visible spectrum is the red, yellow, green, blue and violet. After that comes the UV, the ultraviolet uh, light. After that the X-ray and the highest energy wave is the gamma ray. So they are really, they contain a uh, really high energy. Uh, I guess now next page and this will be the light reaction now let's go and get into what is happening in the in the plants or in the algae algae too so here is a chl chloroplast and i just uh, magnified a thylakoid inside of the chloroplast this purple stuff is going to be the photosystem. The photosystem contains, we will see some pigments. Do I draw? Oh, this is photosystem two. That's the first one, but it na uh, historically uh, named as photosystem two. These green dots are the pigments and they are the light harvesting pigments or the light harvesting complexes. The sun is over there and it uh, sends out electromagnetic waves, green light, for example, but it bounces back because the pigment does not absorb its energy. Let's uh, say the yellow is coming. It's going to be bounced up. That's why we see the plants pretty much green and yellowish. The red one comes from the sun. Oops. And it's going to be absorbed by the pigments as well as the blue. So these are the two lights that they can excite the pigments inside of the photosystem in the light harvesting complexes. Okay. So inside of uh, the photosystem, we have the light, uh, what is that? The chlorophyll A. And uh, chlorophyll A, as well as the primary electron acceptor. So over there. So the light energy is passed from mo molecules to molecule within the photosystem. Finally, the energy, it reaches the reaction center that contains the the chlorophyll A as well as the primary electron acceptor and it's going to excite the electron of the chlorophyll A will be handed over to the electron acceptor, go through the electrotransport chain, loses its energy a little bit, will be picked up by the photosystem one now, this is the one, although this is in the second in the line, it also has a chlorophyll over there that will get excited and will give its electron to the primary electro uh, acceptor again and will move off of the chain through the electrotransport chain. There will be another one, electrotransport chain, okay. And at the end, we have an ATP synthase. Okay, this is the ATP synthase, the good old one that we had in the cellular respiration. Remember, that's pretty much similar to it. And now you would just ask if the electron got lost from the chlorophyll A, where would it get its back, its electron? Here comes the water. The water is going to be split into oxygens, protons, and electrons. And going, the water get oxidized, give its electrons to replace 
the lost electron from the chlorophyll A that went down uh, through the electrotransport chain. And the hydrogens will stay inside of the thylakoid uh, space. Now it's a little bit acidic in here and the pH of the thylakoid space is low. Now the thylakoid membrane is not permeable for the hydrogen ions. So the hydrogen ion, if you it wanna go through, uh, I mean, uh, into the stroma, it has to go through the ATP synthase as it goes through. This is kind of a ke uh, chemiosmosis, if you would just realize that. It would uh, stick the phosphate group to the ADP to form ATP. So uh, we have the ATP, very good. Now, we might just think about so how about the electrons? Okay, here is at the end of the electron. There's no oxygen like the cellular respiration to accept the electrons. Who is going to accept the electrons? Now, it goes down, down, and here we have, oh, as we go through the electrotransport chain, the hydrogen ion will go back, will be, will be brought back into the thyloid space but the electron at the end okay is going to be picked up by the NADP positive it will uh, pick up electrons as well as protons and it will get reduced to 2 NADPH so the whole reaction in here the water get oxidized in the thylakoid uh, space and the NADP plus is going to get reduced. Okay, so what is the point that's really the question? To have high energy electron, well, actually electrons, NADPA in the form of NADPH, and we have ATP. That's really the point, and they uh, are in the stroma, so where would, what did we say? Where is the Calvin cycle? It's going to happen in the stroma.